Hello everyone, welcome back to another machine learning video. This is the start to our second uh, unit on machine learning, the focus of which will be on something called logistic regression. Um, so we'll get into that in the next video, but I first want to introduce a very famous database and this is called the MNIST database. So before I kind of formally introduce it, I have this picture here. And okay, well, if I asked you to identify what this number is, well, you'd look at it and you'd say, well, you know, that looks like a five. And kind of as I have written here, for a human, it's pretty easy to look at a picture like this and recognize that it's a number five. I could do something similar for, you know, any handwritten digit. Um, but the problem becomes significantly more complicated if you say, well, how could I teach a computer to recognize this as a five, right? So, you know, if you're a human looking at it, you just say, well, you know, it's a five because it looks like a five. Um, but kind of how do we actually program a computer to understand that this is a five as well? So kind of enter now the MNIST database. So MNIST stands for Modified National Institute of Standards and Technology. And what this is, is a collection of 70,000 images of handwritten digits. And each image can be understood as a 28 by 28 grid of pixels. So just like this image I have here, it's taken from medium. So we can see along the Y axis, 28 pixels along the X axis, 28 pixels. And each pixel is represented as a number ranging from zero, which is the darkest, so here black, to 255, which is the lightest white. So now we can kind of see, okay, well, in starting to train a computer to recognize this five, maybe it starts to learn where the light and dark patches are, and that can help it learn to recognize handwritten digits. So if we think of kind of lining up all of these pixels in one row, well then 28 squared is 784. So we can imagine each image as a point in 784 dimensional space. Um, so if you're a current student of mine in Math 10, um, then as a kind of a special treat for watching this video, we're going to go through the first two questions from one of your homework assignments. Um, and all I have here is just the code that loads the MNIST data, um, as well as some uh, sklearn functions. Now, I already have it loaded just because running this code uh, takes about a minute, and I didn't want to pause the video and then um, kind of start again just to make uh, editing me a little bit happier. Um, as a warning to our DeepNote users, so myself included, um, I'd recommend not running this cell more than once per session. You probably will run out of memory, so I've run it once. I'm not going to run it again, um, but let's kind of move in to the first question. So notice I have it stored as MNIST, and first question is asking, well, what's the type of MNIST? What data type are we working with? So let me just call type MNIST. And this is saying it's an sklearn bunch object. Now, bunch is not a data type we have seen before. Um, we're not going to spend too much time worrying about what exactly it is, um, but just kind of as a short, uh, maybe hand wavy explanation, it's very similar to a dictionary, but specialized for dealing with labeled data. Um, so next question is asking, okay, or it's telling us we can find different attributes of MNIST by evaluating DIR for directory. And for example, MNIST.data should be thought of as the input data. So it's a pandas data frame with 70,000 rows. So remember I told you there's 70,000 images and 784 columns. Now why 784 columns? Again, just imagine we take this picture here and then instead of arranging the pixels in this square, we just stretch it out until it's one long 784 uh, dimensional vector. All right, very good. So let's actually run the code. I'm going to say dir mnist. And we can see here there's things like data, details, feature names, frame, target, target names, URL. So it's telling us if I look at mnist.data and then I can do dot shape, well, let's take a look and see what it returns. Um, exactly like we expect, 70,000 rows. So that's our data points, our samples, the 70,000 images, and 784 columns. So this is kind of the pixels, kind of the 784 pixels, right? Good. Um, next, it's asking, well, which attribute do you think holds the output data? And we can check our answer. It should be a panda series of size 70,000. Um, so think back to our videos on linear regression. When we're kind of uh, fitting our data, we want to fit to some target value. Uh, so my guess would be target. And what we can do is, well, we can take a look. 
So we can say mnist, let me scroll down a little bit just to make it easier to see, dot target. And well, okay, this looks like a panda series, but let's check the type. And yeah, indeed, this is a panda series. Uh, we can do mnist.target.shape. And remember, panda series are one dimensional. So this is kind of how we're representing a one dimensional tuple, in this case, 70,000 rows, and then this blank second entry. So good, that matches up exactly what we expect. And next part of this question is just asking us to store mnist.data using variable capital X. Um, as a reminder, we use capital letters to remind us that uh, we want two-dimensional input, so a data frame, versus one-dimensional target, which is a pandas series. So let's set up our variables. So we'll say x equals mnist.data and y equals mnist.target. And let's see. Did that there it goes i got the green check mark perfect all right question two so it's saying define a to be the second row of x start counting at zero use i lock not lock even though in this case they'll give the same answer so let's do it i'm going to say a equals x dot i lock now we want the second row so i start counting at zero then one gives me kind of second row how do i get all of the columns pop quiz well i can use colon right so, okay, there's A. Now we want to convert A to a NumPy array using the dot to NumPy method. So dot to underscore NumPy. So looking good so far. And now we want to check our answer. So A should be a NumPy array of shape 784. So let's check type of A. So we can see here it's a NumPy n-dimensional array. I can call A dot shape. And we have 784, so length one tuple. And okay, looking good so far. So notice 784, like we said, that's 28 squared. So now we're gonna reshape A to be a 28 by 28 grid. And this is what's gonna allow us to plot it nicely. So let's do it. I'm gonna say, let's do dot reshape all up here. And actually, you know, hmm. no, I'll do it down here just so that we have uh, the old code. So A dot reshape. And here we want it to be 28 by 28. And shape, let's see here, it should be a tuple. So let me put it as a tuple. All right, so no errors there. And what we're going to do now is we're going to plot A using this code. So let's take a look. Oops, and let's see, I didn't import matplotlib as plt. So let's do this. Oops, lots of silly mistakes today. Let's do import. There we go. And we can see here, if you know, I just asked you, what is this digit? Well, you say it looks like a zero. So, okay, we think it's a zero. A few more things to do here though, before we actually verify that this is zero. So it's saying, uh, let's use the keyword argument uh, argument cmap with the value of binary when calling imshow. Um, so this will display our image in black and white. So I'm going to say cmap equals binary. So looking good. Now we have black and white. If you wanted to have uh, this reversed, uh, it tells us up here, we could use binary underscore r for reversed. Um, so we see that it's a zero, but let's check in y. So remember, y is the target. Let's just see if this matches what we expect. So let's take a look at y, and we can see here, this corresponds to zero, so that's correct. We could also do y of one like this and get zero, um, but good. So that's kind of very quick intro to MNIST dataset, um, also kind of solutions to first two problems from one of our homework assignments if you're a current student of mine. In the next video, um, I'll talk about logistic regression, which uh, we're going to use on this data set to try to train the model to recognize handwritten digits. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.